ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the water. You are joining me for my first day out on the water in 2023, and it's an adventure, baby. We are on the famous now lake in the middle of nowhere of Texas, Lake O.H. Ivy. And last year I was out here with John. I had one of the most miraculous days on the water, uh, him as well, uh, that we've ever had, both individually and together. It was incredible bass fishing experience where I netted three fish over 10 pounds. And over the course of a couple days, uh, we caught some really big fish and I hooked into a giant, you know, a double digit. I lost the fish. And I'm not back for revenge. I'm not back for that. What I'm back for is a three pound crappie. That may sound strange to some of you, but I really do like crappie fishing. And the hunt for a big one is very similar to bass fishing. And we're in one of those lakes where they just coincide growing big crappie and bass. I've never targeted them out here, but we're gonna give it a shot. We've got a extremely windy day here right now. So we've only got about an hour and a half till it gets dark. So we're just kind of getting our feet underneath us, you know, getting some poles stringed up, looking at the electronics and just seeing what's out here. And tomorrow we'll really start fishing and digging in. Let's get the silver bullet on pad for the first time since, gosh, I think October or November of last year. Let's get to looking for some big crappie, trophy crappie, baby. Well, y'all, I've been fishing for about an hour and I've seen like little bits of fish. You know, like there's a couple little dubers right there. I'm looking for these crappie. And I thought that I found some a couple times. And now I'm not so sure that they're crappie. They're, they're acting more like just big gizzard shad or white bass. They're just moving way too much. Crappie tend to not waste a lot of energy they'll sit on cover and just kind of wait so every time that I uh, kind of get close to these fish they'll, they'll move in and out of my my sonar similar to white bass or some other you know roaming fish so I haven't found any that are just sitting on cover yet but we got 51 degree water that's pretty good for this time of year We've had unusually warm weather I think it's supposed to be in the 80s tomorrow. So I'm not sure if these fish are going to be really deep or if they're going to be mid-depth, shallow. I, I don't really know. I'm trying to get a three-pounder. So finding loads of fish is awesome. But typically the big females, they're sort of by themselves most times. All right, I'm going to do a little scanning. Catching a sweet sunset, but that's about it, y'all. I'm out here, I'm out here in the middle of the lake right now. Just doobling with some randos. Just swimmer, free swimmers around here. I don't know what they are. I'm yet to identify. I've had one fish that have sort it's sort of turned. I looked at my bait, but I don't know. These could all be random gizzard chad. This is one of the most unique lakes I've ever seen for big gizzard chad wake up in the morning we're going to start this process over and i think i'm going to run up in the river and, and focus on more timber that's out in the creek channel i saw little signs of life that there's some trees that i think might have some fish just i, I need like more isolated big trees i've been just going over thick like seas of brush and trying to pick out fish and it's been very difficult so far. 
So tomorrow we will continue the crappie mission. Today was just kind of a travel day anyways, but hey, good start to the, the mission with a good sunset. Get some good South Texas vibes. Get a cold brewski. Put her to bed. Think about catching big crappies tomorrow. Doing a little post-sunset dangle. Because the boat ramp's crowded, and I just got my first real thump. It's the right size, but it's not the right species. Uh, we're all familiar with these on this channel. We'll let you go back. There is some activity on this little spot that I'm on right now. Just parked the rig out in a field, y'all. It comes with your $5 a day fee. They were like, yeah, just go out anywhere. And there's no one out here. So what is on the menu tonight? What are we going to be cooking out here? I forgot my headlamp, by the way. It's an unfortunate error, but I do have this, this little lamp here. So I went to Bucky's, as I usually do on these type trips. And we've got a lot to snack on. We're set. We've got pickled garlic. Been having some sinus issues lately. Slamming the garlic. Pickled beets. Pickled beets at Bucky's are not the best thing for you. A ton of sugar in there, but gotta have it. It's a nice little treat. This stuff right here, this stuff will make a turd taste like filet mignon. Pork rinds. I got uh, the Dills. Uh, the Bucky's brand, actually pretty good. They don't have a lot of extra stuff in there. I like that. And since all of my deer meat is currently frozen, no, I'm not going to be thawing that out tonight. Uh, I'm accustomed to that. That usually happens day one. So I get, I get a little chicken salad as a snacker and I do a chicken salad with the pork rinds, just kind of snack, you know, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of beets. Um, I do have some, some Eddie Ray's deer sausage from a deer of two years ago. We could snack on that. And I've got a couple sandwiches, but those are for later in the week. And for a little, a little tasty snack and uh, probably some extra calories, a little IPA. I tried this new Shiner IPA from Bucky's the other day. They got this. It's called the Tex Hex. The Tex Hex. Good name, Shiner. It's good. It's good. I'm not a huge IPA guy, but I like that a lot. I'm going to sleep inside of the truck in here and it is actually perfect weather outside it feels like spring last time me and John were here it was like eight degrees I had the camper had to run the heat all night probably would have died sleeping out here in the truck but right now it's perfect so I'm gonna fuel up and I'll see you guys back on the water in the morning Hello and good morning, fishing freaks. From the tailgate, had a pretty good night's sleep. I gotta say, probably one of the best Texas nights I've ever seen. You know, had that shooting star, but just pristine uh, skies. You could see the stars, just, oh man, it was awesome. Coyotes were, were singing, you know. Nothing like waking up to the birds chirping, seeing a couple of white tails, and in the very distant background, you just hear high-powered outboard motors. Just getting on pad at sunrise. Woo! Come on now. That's outdoor greatness. y'all have crappie fished all your life with mono or just fluoro give bray a try the sensitivity is just so amazing so if you don't know how to tie a connection knot i've got a video where i show how i tie all my um, finesse fishing 
uh, basically spinning spinning rods. Pretty much all my spinning rods I like to use braid. So, and they use the same connection. And I usually love pink. I may just go with a white. Just a standard white. Alrighty. And then I'm probably going to put a dangle dart on there. Because that's the most subtle. I feel like these fish in this lake right now, I've just been hearing from some of the bass guys at the ramp and stuff that it is it is not fishing good. You know, that usually goes for bass and crappie. Just the general consensus. So, uh, I'm going to go with the dangle dart because it's the most natural presentation. Come on, baby. I see you peeking. I see you peeking right there. There's a big crappie on this tree. <clears throat> it's either a big crappie or a small bass. Oh, come on, eat it. had one bite it that gum it like a good one too oh gosh come on get out of there get out of there it's either gonna be a white bass or a big crappie be a big crappie god dog it it's a largey It looked right. It looked like the right kind. Come here. Oh, well, I will say that is my first bass of the new year. Perfectly hooked in the schnoz. some brush and about 25 foot and that dangle dart it'll get them it'll get them all I know there's some crappie in there too though one swimming on top of there right now here goes that fish all right we're gonna try to drop it back down on that spot one on it it's coming it's coming it's coming god fish should eat it come on it's a good crappie and it's another two pound bass or it's a crappie come on got him be a big one. oh it's another large one <clears throat> It's a big one, but it's not the right kind. Oh, there's another one. In the brush, thick brush. Good fish. I wish that was a crappie because <laughs> that's like a two pounder but it's not still fun though
Come on, eat it. There we go. That's got to be a crappie. Oh, it's another bass. Oh my gosh. Guys are just stacked up right there. Little tasties. There's another one on it. Golly. Crack at them right here. This one might be a little bigger. Yep, it's a little bit bigger. Ooh, yeah. That's a pretty one. Oh. <sighs> That one just tattooed it. It was sitting on a tree. Little younglings. All right, I'm gonna get out another bait. Got my lovely baits all organized. Dangle darts. Saucies. Got my dangle darts, got my snackies, got my grubbies, and I've got my buds. This is the color right here though, guys. This color is a clear water killer. Natural. usually get a bunch of crappie on one plastic but when you get into bass those teeth are involved those head shakes just tend to tear up your baits a little bit that white head seemed to work on the bass so I'm gonna stick with it for the crops there we go Those got to be some crappie. I'll wait till these boats go by and then we'll fish them. I've, I've seen multiple groups on these trees right here in front of me. All right, guys, I turned around so I could hit this little nook where I saw these crappie. One little bass as I was turning around, so hoping they're not all micro bass. But the wind is picking up, so it might get them going here on this bank. It's turned away, looked like it was gonna eat, and it just turned away. Man, these are behaving like. School of juvenile basses. Juvenile bass. They look sort of long. God, they're boat shy. It's like you can't get 25 feet from them and they start shifting around. Which also makes me think they're bass. Make it pretty tough on the old eight ounce jig here. That's how we twitch our lures out. 
Yeah, big in, big, big, big in. All right, we're getting, we're getting a little crazy now. Just frustrated not being able to get on the crop tops, man. God dang, look at all these mysterious fish. It's like they behave similar to crappie, but I'm not, I'm not convinced. I had one bite it as I threw random cast it up into the brush. Maybe that's the key is not get too close to them. You know, little pound and a half large mouth. The ones I've landed have all been green bass. Deep, 25 foot out of a brush pile. So, uh, you know, this lake's huge. I guess I should, should probably explore a little more. Conditions are changing dramatically. Look at the hair. Look at the hair flip right now. That means about 15 when the hair flips up. 15 mile an hour. So I'm going to pull the trolling motor up and see if we can find some other bank that looks tasty. There we go. Come on, baby. Big big. See a big ass carp. Oh my gosh. No. Oh my god, he broke my What is sharp on a carp? No idea. Hooked carp on the bottom. Best colored blade bait for this lake. Dirty dog. Dirty butt sniffer. Not sure if that last clip recorded but i caught a carp and uh somehow i got behind a gill plate or something and broke my line on a probably the best colored blade bit i have just a plain nickel really purple and white uh-huh just big big magnums coming up That's happening. Oh, yeah. These things are pulling like, like a freight train. Ooh, man, they like this bait. Got it, got it down his whole face. Look at that. At first. I know I kind of look like a hillbilly pirate right now, but Hair's long, about to blow my hat off. Had to go bandana. Had to put my mic on so you guys could hear because this wind is so insane. Come on, buddy. There you go, oh my. But there's just, the bottom literally is just coming alive. It doesn't look like anything and then you throw it down there and it's just fish everywhere. Oh, look at that. That was like a large mouth jump. Big magnums. This is what I hoped to be catching with crappie, but we are definitely on some white bass right now, that's for sure. So I'm just dropping this to the bottom, this blade bait, literally on the bottom, like an inch off. There's something with winter where they get real tight. 
they just get real tight to the bottom and if you just put your bait down there whether it's a spoon or one of these blade baits and you don't lift it up super high like in the summer you know they're usually more suspended off the bottom and you lift your bait way high and they're real aggressive and this cold water stuff is just little lifts it's nice with the live scope you can see how how far you're lifting it know when the, the fish are you know not liking it but just a foot or two that's all you got to do this is actually one of the baits i'm i've been most excited about developing because i catch so many different species on these i catch all three you know i don't i don't just fish for bass so this thing will catch catch them all and sometimes a spoon works better than this and vice versa and right now they just want this vibrating you can feel it in your rod tip little vibe little vibe just little pumps little pumps that's such a good fight. Just feeling that tug. I got everybody around me fishing for giant largemouth. I don't think anybody fishes for these things. What's that? Better than nothing, Better than nothing. exactly. When the going gets tough, it's time for a beat break. We'll pop the seal on that baby. Mmm! Nice sugary treat. Kind of gotten out of the wind a little bit. It's pretty much impossible on this lake, but just made it uh, my first A rig cast on a Mondo bass and ignored it, so. I know how that goes. So, decided to uh, sit down and eat me some beets. I honestly don't know where these crappie are. I think I'm being fooled. Thinking I'm looking at crappie and I'm not. watched them on live scope enough times now on various different lakes to see how they behave you know and how they respond to your baits a lot of these fish are not responding like crappie crappie will usually just sit there they might like look at your bait and not chase it but They'll give it a look. They don't just swim away, swim away you know, especially being, being pretty cautious, staying 20 feet away or so. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying, keep inquiring, see what I can learn. But as of right now, I'm skunked on the crops. I just met the man in charge of the water here. See you, dude. His name is Travis. He saw he saw the bandana from far away and he hollered. He's like, LFG. So came over there. I gave him a fishing pole. I got some new rods, had some extras, so hooked him up with one. Anyway, uh, I don't see any boats over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume fishing sucks where I'm at. Over by the dam. I've exhausted a lot of different areas that I thought were gonna produce. And right now I'm just kind of rambling. So good news is I'm not going to sleep in my truck tonight. Uh, I'm going to go. John has got a house. John B's coming in as we speak. And uh, he's got some buddies with him. So I'm going to go over there. Shoot the breeze. See if we can figure out a fishing plan for tomorrow. But I'm going to, going to give her one more little dangle. Don't you worry. Spooned one up. 
sun down, spooned one up. Out here in the same depth, about 25, 30. I don't know where the crappie are. Well, fishing freaks, we put in a hard eight out here on the water. I caught five bass. I think the biggest one was two and a half pounds. So uh, no crappie and I don't know. If you know where the crappie are, let me know in the comments. I, I Every time I think I've found a few crappie, they're not. There's a lot of bass in the trees, I can tell you that. I don't know, this lake is perplexing to me and you know, it's not forgotten on me. The last time I was out here, I, I struggled really, really bad just to catch a fish, catch a bass. The white bass are abundant. We can go hammer those, but I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I've got another day out here, and I pretty much hit the stuff I thought the crappie were going to be on today. So unless I get some other knowledge, I don't know. I'm just going to, I may just put a big old pole in my hands and go bass fishing. May the fish be with you, fishing freaks, and I'll see you on the next episode.